Hi, this is John Kanlopoulos from our office here in Athens, Greece, uh, clinical professor of ophthalmology at NYU Medical School. Let's go and look a little bit um, the pathophysiology of floaters. Floaters usually are created when the vitreous body, which is the gel that's uh, uh, within the uh, eye dome, so to speak, detaches from the retina. And uh, some uh, sneaky, some fibrotic material, usually between the vitreous body and the optic nerve, starts to float within the vitreous cavity. And as it moves with our eye movements, these small opacities uh, create shadows from the light that enters the eye. And we actually see these shadows dancing around, especially if these vitreous opacities are within our visual axis, are between the pupillary aperture in our macula, which is the center of our vision. Let's go and see an example, very helpful clinical example of a patient who has an obvious vitreous floater here, photographed two years ago. You can see this looks kind of like a dolphin to me. It's a very dense vitreous floater. Ophthalmologists can tell from these pictures that this is a patient with very high myopia. He also has mild cataract despite his young age. He's about a minus 21 in myopic degrees. And the myopic degeneration is more evident here in the macular atrophy, but our subject here is vitreous floater. It was asymptomatic here because he's seeing through the macula. So he did not notice this back then in 2017. Last few months, he comes in complaining that he starts seeing this little fly, especially in a white background, that he actually reaches out to grab sometimes. And this is the same floater. We're talking about the exact same floater that we identified back here several years ago that has moved now a little bit more towards the macula. And as the vitreous dances around with the eye movements, this can certainly come into his visual axis right in front of the macula and become more symptomatic. So this is why floaters usually stay around for a while, because this is going to go away when this, with gravity and with further liquefaction, meaning change of the vitreous body from gel to liquid, will come with gravity to go under the visual axis. This is how some floaters improve. This is how some floaters uh, become worse because they may be superior or on the side of our visual axis and they may enter our visual axis later in time with the continuous change that our vitreous uh, body within our eye uh, has through time, through all the activities that we do, through diet, through sports, uh, what have you. So this is a very simple explanation. I hope you found this helpful. This is John Kalopoulos uh, from our center here in Athens, Greece, clinical professor of ophthalmology at NYU Medical School in New York City, New York. Thanks so much.